Anyways, in this video, I'm going to be teaching you the holy grail of color changes, the clip shift. Check this out. telling you it's a fully sick move you can even do it infinitely one two three and so on <laughs> now full disclosure this move is not for the faint of heart it's extremely difficult but when you learn it well you'd be the best magician within a 10 foot radius First, I just want to throw some credit towards Chad Nelson, the creator of the OG Clip Shift. In 2008, he published this move. Uh, this handling that I'm teaching you, though, is not exactly the same. It is slightly different. Uh, if you want to learn his handling, go buy it. Go buy it, man. But the handling I'm teaching you is uh, just as good, except it's harder to make it silent. When you first start practicing this, you're going to hear this click. Hear that? That's horrible. You want it to get silent that. <laughs> Truthfully, the click isn't really a big deal, but if you can learn how to do it without the sound of the click, it's better. But, you know, ambient noise will usually cover it, so it's not a big deal. Now, before we get stuck into the tutorial, 40% of you that watch my videos aren't subscribed, so what are you doing, man? You really help me out if you just press a button. That's all you gotta do, press a button, and then you'll be miles ahead of all the other magicians that are trying to learn all these cool moves that I'm sharing with you. <laughs> And if you're not a magician, you can always just check out my performance videos. I post heaps and heaps of shorts of me doing various tricks that you will probably enjoy. And it gives you a chance to try and figure them out in the comments. <laughs> Also, I just want to quickly mention, I've recently put a little members section so you can actually join and support your boy in content creation. Of course, you don't have to, but you can. It's an option, but you don't have to. I also have a Twitch account, which I plan on live streaming very regularly, so make sure that you check that. Link's in the description below. Check it out, man. And with all that said and done, let's dive into tutorial view. Alright, here we are in tutorial view, so at this point, smash like, get that uh, engagement up, and uh, let me increase the audio quality. I'm going to try and go over this in as much detail as I can. It is very difficult, and if you have questions, remember, leave them in the comments below. But I think you'll get all the information you need. So the beautiful thing about this change is there's no setup. It's actually a good idea before you do this to like just take your hand and just sort of stretch them inwards, all right? Stretch your fingers inwards, stretch them outwards, like really give your fingers a good stretching because this move requires you to contort quite a bit in order to exercise the move or execute the move. So here's what you need to do. The grip looks like this. So the thumb is about halfway in the center of the deck here. Okay, you're holding it at like a 45 degree angle if the deck was flat, it's like a 45 degree angle. And your um, your index finger needs to be free because this is gonna be the one that'll, that pulls the card around and aligns it. These three fingers just lining across the front, uh, mostly covering the deck, but there's a little bit at the front there. So it's more so to the front side. Now, you're gonna hold this in nice and deep as well, this is the other thing. The grip needs to be nice and deep, deep enough that you can curl these fingers around to the back of the deck, which will allow you to work a card, sort of dislodge a card, okay? And your pinky is going to be the one that the main culprit doing most of the work, all right? So here's what you need to be able to do. Essentially what's gonna happen is your fingers are gonna dislodge the bottom most card. You're going to curl in your uh, pinky and your ring finger as far as you possibly can. This will force the card past the deck and hopefully it will land underneath your index finger which will then straighten out and pull the card into alignment. Now that's a very rough idea of what's going on but let's get straight into some real detailed explanation. So the detailed explanation is this. You're gonna hold the deck in the second knuckles of each of these fingers, the second knuckle. So if you were to divide your finger, one, two, and three, you want it to be here on each of those fingers. So the deck will actually automatically put your hand at that 45 degree because of the length of your fingers, unless you have strange fingers. And if that's the case, you're gonna to have to modify. <laughs> but check it out. 
you're going to hold it like this. Your pinky and your ring finger are going to be doing most of the work while your index finger and your thumb are the stability for the remainder of the card. So they're going to work this card off, off the edge here like that. Okay, it's going to flick flick sort of down. Now to get it to clear the deck, what actually happens is the deck will lever a little bit. You can see it's kind of, I'm using my index finger to kind of slightly push the deck down enough that the card can clear. Okay. And I'm also making sure that my index finger is curled under enough that when the card does clear, it'll land underneath that index finger. If you miss the index finger, Okay, if you do this move and you miss the index finger, it is impossible. I mean, you probably, it's possible, but it's like, it's damned near impossible. So if, let me just miss it. <laughs> there we go. It's, once it's missed, it's an, almost impossible to reach back under and get that card back into position again, and you'll be screwed. So you really got to make sure that you curl the finger under enough. Okay, so when I, the way that I make sure that I can do that is that when I'm pulling the card around, and the deck starts to move out. Once I know it's about to clear, I actually touch my, my index finger to the pad of my thumb. If I can contort enough for you to see. You can see I'm actually touching them together. And that way when the card clears, it'll go straight underneath that knuckle. And then to align it, I'm pivoting the card around the index finger here. You can see it's pivoting around like this. And that's how it's getting into alignment. Now, if you overshoot the card, it'll look a little bit weird. You can see I've overshot there. It'll look a little bit weird, but it's not too bad. If you undershoot the card though, you're going to end up with this awkward thing where it stops like this, and that's just not gonna look good. So you're gonna wanna try and shoot that card just enough that it lands either a little bit over or flush. Ideally flush, but a little bit over is better than a little bit under. So pull the card down around, catch it under your index finger, and then slide it into alignment. Now, every time you practice this move, make sure that before you get into the nitty gritty of it, you do stretch your hands out. Okay, I don't have to do that anymore because I've built up enough strength and flexibility in my hands to be able to execute this move at will. But when I first started practicing it, I didn't stretch and I would get like cramps and my hand would just hurt. And I remember getting so frustrated trying to learn this move that I just gave up, like throw decks of cards around, getting real angry. <laughs> but you have to remember that if you just follow the steps, you'll be able to execute the move probably in a couple of weeks with enough practice. Now, another tip is that if you're having trouble squaring that card up, so once it comes under here and you're clearing and you're pulling this card around and aligning it, there is actually something you can do to make sure that it always aligns. And that is, you'll actually see that my fingers are still in contact with that card. As I'm pulling it around, my fingers are actually squaring up with the deck as well. This allows me to keep the front edge aligned, which will, you know, consequently keep the rest of the card aligned as well. So this is something to consider uh, when you're doing this move. Now, I want to show you from this angle here that when the card comes out, you pull it under, you catch it under your finger and you pull it into alignment. The angles on this are that because you can see here the card comes out, the angles are actually pretty good, but you want to keep note that this is a potential flash moment right here, okay? So this right there. So to avoid that, you actually want to have the deck face tilted facing towards your spectator's eyes. So this is the spectator's eyes, this camera lens. And if it's facing towards that, you're less likely to flash. However, if you try to do it like on an angle like this, you're likely to flash out the bottom or just through the fingers here. So to avoid that, try to keep the deck face directly at your spectator's eyes. That will prevent flashing. So I'm just gonna blitz through the explanation one more time quickly, and hopefully you'll have a full understanding of exactly what's going on. So here it is. The grip at the 45 degree angles, the three across the front, the index and the thumb, doing most of the work holding the cards together. Your pinky and ring finger, wiggle that card to freedom, it'll clear the thumb. You curl these in and slightly bring the deck out so that the card can land underneath your index finger, and then your index finger will stretch out, rotating around this index, giving you the alignment. So all together, boom, it's a beautiful color change. So there it is, guys. I don't want to go into it too much more than that. I feel like that is enough information to get you on your way to being the best magician in your house. So if you enjoyed the video, smash like, and uh, see you later. Enchanté.